Hi, hello and welcome back to F1 Challenge VB. My name is Mafesto and our epic journey through the history of Formula 1 continues today with the ninth and final round of the 1954 season, the Spanish Grand Prix. It was held on the 24th of October, it had 22 entries, 21 of them took part in the race but only 9 drivers finished the race, which consisted of 80 laps completed in 3 hours, 13 minutes and 52 seconds. Ascari started the race from pole with Fangio in 2nd, Hawthorne 3rd, Harry Shell 4th and Luigi Villoresi in 5th. Hawthorne drove brilliantly and won the Spanish Grand Prix, Musso finished in 2nd 1 minute 13.2 seconds later. Fangio crossed the line in 3rd, he was 1 lap down, Mieres finished 4th, he was also 1 lap down, and rounding off the top 5 was Karl Klink who was also 1 lap behind. On lap 3, Ascari posted the fastest time of the race, a 2 minute 20.4 second lap. After a pretty lengthy absence from the Formula 1 calendar, we return to Pedralbes in Spain, and the lap starts off with a very long run up into turn 1, a right hand hairpin. Break hard and make sure not to get too close to the wall as it is very bumpy there and you can easily lose the car. Next is turn 2, a high speed left hander that brings us straight into turn 3, another right hand hairpin. Once again be mindful of the fact that the corner is quite bumpy. Next we have turn 4, a medium speed left hander. Don't go too wide though or you risk crashing into the hay bales. This is followed by turn 5, a medium speed right hander. Once again don't get too close to the wall as it is very bumpy and could throw you off. Finally we have turn 6, a slow speed right hander that brings us onto the main straight and that is a lap around the Pedralbes circuit. And here we are in qualifying for the Spanish Grand Prix and our first lap is a 2.8.57 which places, uh, which places us into pole, but we are the only ones to have posted a qualifying time thus far, so whatever, I don't know why DA didn't post in a single lap in 10 minutes, but oh well. Next we post a 207.48, which is a about a 1 second improvement on our first qualifying lap, which is quite good, and then finally a 26. 7, which is a further improvement on our lap time. Again, no one has posted a single qualifying lap yet, so we shouldn't uh, think that we will keep pole. And here we have the previous Grand Prix, Spanish Grand Prix winners. Obviously, there was only one in 1951, which was won by Andy Higgs, so he's the only one who has ever won a Spanish Grand Prix since the World Championship and amazingly enough Andy Hicks keeps his pole with Prince Bira 4 seconds later coming into second, Fangio 3rd, Hawthorne 4th and Jose Froelein Gonzalez rounding off the top 5. Trintignant is in 6th, Hans Hermann 7th, Luigi Musso 8th, Nino Farina 9th, Roberto Mieres occupies the 10th spot on the grid with Robert Manzo in 11th, Sterling Moss in the Green Maserati in 12th, Onofre Marimon 13th, Andre Pilat 14th, Sergio Mantovani 15th, 16th is Umberto Malioli with Luigi Villoris in 17th, 18th is Jean Berra, Alberto Ascari unfortunately is down in 19th with Eli Bayol and occupying the 20th spot on the grid. So here we are once again in Spain, haven't raced here since 1951 but considering that we managed to somehow pull off a pole. I'm thinking that we can do pretty well in this race and we cut straight to the replay because the game started to lag like a dog. It always does that at this circuit, especially when people crash into each other and that happens quite a lot in this game, as we found out in the past uh, four or five seasons now. And we are now looking at Roberto Mieres who looks like crashes into a an invisible wall which destroys completely destroys his car and that's the end of his race next is andre pilet who loses his car as he comes over the the hill there and crashes into the hay bales loses his front left wheel and that's the end of his race we are now looking at juan manuel fangio in the number two mercedes who comes into this left hander goes very wide crashes into the hay bales and he is out of the race the same thing happened to Hans Hermann in the other Mercedes, so those are both out of the race. Next we have Sergio Mantovani who also goes very wide through this 
Left-hander crashes into the Ferrari and into the wall and loses both its front wheels. Next we have Umberto Malioli who loses control of his Ferrari coming into this um, left-hander and there we see the Maserati crashing into him. And those are the first six retirements of the race and we are going to try and complete our first lap. Hopefully we will be able to. And here we are coming into turn one and on lap two we have Alberto Ascari right behind us. Hopefully we can keep him at bay as we now have a look at Nino Farina who loses control of his car through that uh, left hander. And then I don't know his AI gets confused and drives straight into the wall or something. I There's no real reason to do that. Maurice Centinia also loses control of his car through the uh, turn three, I believe that is, or two. Actually, it's turn. Yeah, it's turn two. Uh, and then he gets hit by someone, and he is Trentino is out of the race. As we continue on on our lap two, we come through this through turn uh, four. It is actually. Then on lap three, we once again come through. Actually, this is turn two. Chasing after Robert Manso, who is about 10 seconds of the road now, and we have a look at Mike Hawthorne who crashes into that Simca Gordini and he is out of the race, obviously. Now we have a look at Jambera who loses, takes a bit too much of the corner, hits the wall on the apex, which flips his car over, and he is also out of the Spanish Grand Prix as we once again come into turn 4. And there we see Alberto Ascari losing control of his car, allowing us to move up into 10th. Next is Sterling Moss who is very slow for some reason or another. So we take 9th at the moment which is quite nice. Hopefully we can keep up this pace. Lap 4 and we move up into 6 obviously because of some of the retirements. As we come through turn 4 we touch that Simca Gordini which kind of throws our paper thin Mercedes around it. This car is so freaking light anything can move it and we see Sterling Moss's car there at the side of the track without any wheels so he comes into this left hander, goes very wide, crashes into the wall and into the Ferrari, loses both of his, of his front wheels and that is the end of his race as I'm start trying to uh, control my car. and. Uh, Ascari manages to whiz past us, so we drop down into 8th place at the moment as we come through the final corner. But on lap 5, later on on lap 5, we manage to pass Ascari once again and we move back up into 6th. Well, move into 6th, we haven't been in 6th yet. But then as we come into the penalt, no, into that corner. Ascari um, overtakes us, however, later on, on lap 5, he loses control of his car through turn 4 and we move back up into 5th, lap 11 and we are now up in 11th, no, oh, sorry, in, in 4th, as we see Alberto Ascari coming through this uh, left-hander, goes, takes a bit too much of the curb, hits the wall, flips, which flips his car over and he is out of the race so no he's no longer a threat to us and we are now on lap 12 and we see Robert Manzon doing the exact same thing that the AI doesn't really like that corner does it so many accidents ha happened in that corner it's pretty much unbelievable really but we are still in the race which is absolutely amazing we've been doing pretty well we still have more than half a race left so hopefully we can keep it together and on lap 14 Luigi Musso is out of the race not sure what happened but I'm guessing we will have a replay and indeed we do he comes into the pits he ran out of fuel and it looks like he just couldn't get to his pit box although even he if he would have gotten to his pit box I doubt he would have gotten back into the race because we know that the pits are quite bugged in this race. Lap 19 and Eli Bayol is also out of the race. So the number is thinning quite rapidly and here we have him coming through 
la uh, turn for the left-hander which has caused so many problems to so many drivers this race and now we have Jose Freilan Gonzalez who pulls to the side of the race because he's to the side of the track he's run out of fuel so that's two people retiring due to lack of fuel we are on lap 19 this is lap 22 Villoresi was for some reason very very slow so we take second place Prince Bira is leading the race he's about 10 seconds up the road I don't think we can catch him but I'll do my best on lap 25 however Luigi Villoresi retires for some reason and there are only two people left in the race at this point and here is Luigi Villoresi coming into the penultimate corner here he goes very wide I'm not sure why and then he decides to drive straight into the hay bales because the AI I don't know uh, went on vacation or something <laughs> But anyway, we are still chasing after Prince Bira. He is about 10 seconds up the road. I doubt we can catch him. We have only four laps left. And later on, something happened to Prince Bira and he is out of the Spanish Grand Prix. So we are the only ones left in the race. And here we have Prince Bira who pulls to the side. He's run out of fuel. That's three people who've run out of fuel in this race. And that allows us to take the lead and we have three more laps to go and that is absolutely uh, I, I don't know and here we are coming around on lap 28 to take the win of the Spanish Grand Prix and this and here we have the race results we have well Andy the only one who finished the race and Ascari managed to post the fastest lap so at least there's one other person who will get at least one point but uh, well quite an interesting result there as we now take a look at the retirements there I think this is our third race in which we are the only ones to finish we had one at the Indianapolis 500 then a another one at one of the Dutch Grand Prix so yeah but at least we won the race right Although the victory is kind of bittersweet because, well, it was pretty much handed to us. But I will take it since we haven't won a single race since the Italian Grand Prix in 1953. So that's pretty nice. That's a pretty good w way to um, wrap up the season, I guess. So, uh, yeah, not a good race but still a win is a win anyway here are the career statistics and this has been Andy's 42nd Grand Prix his best start is from first has three pole positions has posted eight fastest laps his best finish is first has completed 26 races 24 of those in the points has won 14 races two of which at the Indianapolis 500 has three championships under his belt, has scored a total of 157 points, has retired 16 times, has experienced 845 out of 1137 laps, has five bronze trophies, two silver trophies, 14 gold trophies and as an extension 14 podiums. And here we have one final look at the championship standings. Alberto Ascari wins the 1954 Drivers' Championship. Prince Bira finishes in second, Bera third, Umberto Malioli fourth. And thanks to our win here at the Spanish Grand Prix, we move up into fifth place. So we managed to f finish pretty high, even though we only scored points in two of our races. So that's quite amazing. And everyone else, everyone scored points all the way down to 16th, which is held by Maurice Trintignant. So that was the Spanish Grand Prix and that was a 1954 Formula One World Championship season. It was quite an interesting season, especially for Andy Higgs, who, well, especially not Andy Higgs, but not only to Andy Higgs, but also his two, his four uh, Mercedes uh, teammates, none of which, none of who managed to finish a single race during the course of the season. Although Fangio got very close to 
uh, finishing the German Grand Prix, although he was a little bit off and did not classify as a finisher. But yeah, that is it from this video, from this race, from this season. However, we don't, we won't stop there. Our the story goes on, and our next season is the controversial and disastrous 1955 season, and we'll get to that why that is when we start off the season. So expect the the first video of the season to be quite lengthy because I want to talk about the 1955 season in more detail than normal because I need to make it justice somehow. So yeah, new season, new teams, new circuits, some that are reappearing, some that will be modified from how they looked in this season. But anyway, but anyway, as of this video going live, I will give you guys a few more hours to vote for next season's team if you haven't done so yet so make sure to do it if you want to have a say in Andy Higgs's career uh other than that I also have a second channel link is in the description if you want to check that out as well other than that I hope you guys enjoyed this video thank you all so much for watching and as always stay sharp <laughs>